And I guess this is a car, huh? This is it. Looks like it's been sitting here a little bit, though, huh? Yes, it has. Bought it about four or five years ago. It's got a Cummins engine in it. What? Got it. Hello. <laughs> Got a cheater. Try it again. She's gonna play. Small town business owners Wyatt and Lance Bush team together to form Craven Customs. A father and son duo scavenging the web along with the Northeast Texas woods in search of rusty relics. While buying and building on a budget, they recreate and preserve hidden patina, giving each one a story of its own. Chasing their passion, they're giving the past a future, saving lost dreams one vehicle at a time. With help from God, these guys are turning rust. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name's Lana Boren. I'm selling a 52 Pontiac Chieftain. And I guess this is a car, huh? This is it. Pretty cool. Pretty neat. It's a 52? 52. Yes, ma'am. I love the old trim on this thing. And the waterfall on the front. Oh, yeah? Pretty neat. Looks like it's been sitting here a little bit, though, huh? Yes, it has. Yeah. You know about how long it's been sitting? I think it's been sitting about four to five years. Yes, ma'am. Bought it about four or five years ago. It's got a Cummins engine in it. Uh, my husband purchased this car about five years ago, I think. And it's got a Cummins engine in it, so it was loud when it showed up. So I knew when he was coming. Do you mind if I pop the hood and look at that? Because that's it. what makes this thing interesting to exactly. me. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, wall she's wall. stuffed in there. Ain't it, it is. It's very tight. Pretty impressive. So was this something that your husband had built or? No, he it, bought it like okay, this. Okay, he bought yeah. it that way. Yeah. So when we first learned about the whereabouts of this old car, I actually heard from it from my buddy Brandon Chenault that we bought the old DeLorean from. He had actually bought an old wrecker truck from Miss Lana, and unfortunately he had found out that her husband had passed away last year. So this was something he actually drove around from time he to did time? He yeah. did, every once in a while, but yeah. not very often. Yeah, that's the thing about them old diesels is it, <laughs> Normally, if you've got a good battery and some fuel in it, they'll, they'll start. They'll start up. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like the old visor on it. Mind if I look inside? Go ahead. All right. Crazy upholstery work on the seats there, ain't it? <laughs> kind of '60s looking in there. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad, sheet metal wise. I love the colors on it. Got a real neat patina. Good rat rod. Yeah. I see they even had a receiver hitch back here. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Looked like they were going to haul something, which I guess with that <laughs> diesel, it should do it. You could haul anything, yeah. probably. <laughs> Pretty neat. What do you think about it? Yeah, I like it. 
And you had mentioned that you had some old uh, parts cars that could maybe yes, go with it? Yes, I had three parts cars that are at my actual house. This is my son's house. Yes, ma'am. And I've got three that have the waterfalls and everything. They're, okay. they're really nice. The parts cars, I really don't know anything about either. He showed up with those. I don't even think I was around. I think I was working. And so uh, I was like, uh, why do you have these other chieftains? He says, parts for the other chieftain. Yeah, I was noticing it's a little soft out here, so I don't know how hard it's gonna get to be moving it out, you know, until it's sunk in there, but maybe these tires might take a little air, help some. Well, I've got my dad and his tractor to come pull it out. Okay. I know we had already talked about what you needed to get out of it, and I feel like that's pretty fair. I mean, it's definitely got a lot of work that's already been done to it. So yes. I'd love to get it back and try to dig into it and see what it's going to take. I'd love to see it running. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if the brakes and stuff, but mechanical, like engine-wise, I don't think it's going to take much. No, I don't think it will either. Yeah. New battery. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, we headed over here thinking it was something we couldn't live without, and seeing it, I think that's true. So. <laughs> Good. I think we'll go ahead and pull the trigger on it. All right. Uh, like I said, if, if you don't mind helping us move it, because... Being that the weight's up front here, and if I back my trailer up, it's going to be at the back of the trailer, so I probably need to load it the other yes. way. Yes, yeah. But my I've got air. I can, <laughs> I can air the tires up if we need to, okay. but maybe to keep them from messing up any more than they already are, popping right. off the bead. Cool. Well, I'll go grab some cash, and we'll make a game plan of getting it on there. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. Should work. Everything rolling? Everything's rolling. Cool. The tire pulled off the bead over here, but... Looks like the old pan was sitting on the ground. Yeah. This ain't normal for the brakes not to be locked up on us. Yeah, this tire done come blood off the wheel. That should work, huh? Yeah. That should work. Should be able to back the trailer up to it now and load it on up there. That gotta work? I think that'll work. No idea how heavy this thing is, but 
I bet it's heavy. Yeah, I'm sure it's a chunk. I'm curious if it's still on the original frame or if they've... Right, yeah. Kind of looks like it. Yeah. I got mine on the end of the control arm, right there by the spindle. That's what I got. It's just cool enough. I ain't really got to worry about snakes. Right. Um, yeah, this tire done come completely yeah. off the... That one over there is off, the, I mean, it's off the bead, but it's not off the rim like that. <laughs> yeah, maybe start coming this way. Oh, this way, okay. Yeah. I want to check, I don't want to hang that. That oil pan is extremely low and I don't want to accidentally hang it in this cutout of the trailer. Uh, I think we're okay. I think as we get up higher, it'll come up to um, We might check it in another couple feet. Okay. Can you come my way or is it just doing what it it's wants to? It's doing what it wants to right now, I think it'll. Fine. Yeah, that thing is low though. Mm -hmm. Looked like it may have took a hit or something at one time. Yeah. Kind of bent up in the middle. Did the other side have the fender skirt? I just now. I don't know. I seen this one on this side when I came around, but I didn't notice if it. Nope, it's missing it. Missing it. Maybe one of those other ones might have it. That's gonna be good. Shoot some air in it, see how it looks. definitely need grease. Yes, they do. She's packed in there, ain't it? Yep, it is. 
Kind of crazy how so many pine needles. I wonder if they had the hood open for a little bit. I don't see no rat's nest. No, I don't either. I see a dirt dauber's nest, but. <laughs> 12 foot long stick. <laughs> yeah, we're good on all. That's good. It's got all 12 quarts in there. Electric fan. I don't see nothing down in the radiator. She could just be low, maybe. No battery underneath here, huh? No, no room for it. Uh-uh. Even width-wise, this thing was... Yeah. I don't know what this car had it in originally. It was a straight six, or it wouldn't have had a straight eight in it, would it? You know, it, back in... It could have. Yeah, I had no Buick Special 53 model that had, had a straight eight in it, so... Yeah. Pretty cool stinking car. Mm hmm I'm assuming maybe the battery's in the trunk. Probably so. Now we have no keys to. Curious. Yeah, the tank's gotta be back there too. Oh yeah. Probably has like a fuel cell or something. No keys to, I wonder if it's got an aftermarket ignition in here. Nope. It's the old standard one. But it could just be a toggle switch and a push button on the starter. Neat old dash in it though. Hope maybe there might be a key in there. That's what I was hoping here, but. Pretty nice old aftermarket gauges there. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I guess first things first is try to get into the rest of the car. Right, yep. Because until we know what we got to work with, you don't know where to start. Right. She ain't gonna start with no battery. So guys, most of the time we find these old vehicles sitting out in the woods and barns. Uh, the engine is typically locked up solid and hasn't been messed with in years. Now in this case, we've actually got something more modern to work with, and that being a 12-valve Cummins diesel. Now supposedly this car was running four or five years back, and with diesels, if that's true, it really shouldn't take anything at all to hear this thing fire up and run again. Now, we do have a few pine needles that have worked their way through uh, fender gaps and hood gaps and stuff like that, but it doesn't look like any kind of rats or animals have gotten up in here and started building a home. So there's not a lot of wiring on these old engines anyways for them to chew on, but in this case, everything appears to be in pretty good shape. Now, we've got an electric fan here, so we'll have to be sure that we get all that working and be sure this engine doesn't run hot on us because there's no coolant in our antifreeze, so really not sure of where that might have been, possibly just a small leak that's leaked out over the years, but definitely something we want to pay attention to. Now up here, this would have normally went to your intercooler, but they've got it coming straight out over here to our turbo. So in the future, we get this car up and running, we may eventually want to go ahead and add an intercooler back to it, which will definitely help this thing run a little better if we're using it a lot. Now on the exterior of this car, it's got a really cool patina to it. Now on this side here, we've got a pretty bad fender gap. So it looks like somebody has maybe had this car in reverse at one time, hung a stump, hung, hung something on that, which pulled this gap huge on this side. So we definitely want to figure that out. Uh, they've got some primer up here on the front fender, but once again, really cool color still left on it. Uh, the trim's in pretty good shape. I love this old school visor on it. And as we had seen when we picked the car up, all this old trim is in really good shape and we still have our chief 
right there on the front of the hood that's all intact. Now on our tires, uh, we should have tried to shoot a little air to them before we drug it up onto the trailer because they come off the bead in the process. We aired them back up to get it in the shop, but as you guys can tell, we've already lost air in most of them. We were missing our fender skirt on this side, so I'm hoping once we're able to get into the trunk, maybe it might be in there, because it doesn't appear to be inside the car anywhere, and maybe some of the parts cars might have that fender skirt that we're looking for on it as well. Uh, there's not a lot of rust on this old car. It's pretty solid, just some surface rust on the top, but nothing has really rusted through uh, really bad yet. Now back here on the back of it, it's got a really cool bumper design, and at some point in time, someone has actually welded a hitch onto the back of that bumper. So really not sure how well, how solid that is all welded in, uh, but we'll definitely want to check that out before we try to see if this thing will actually haul anything down the road. Uh, we're going to have to figure out our keys for getting into this car because I believe our battery and our fuel cell is going to be in this trunk. So we can look the car over the best we can. Hopefully we can find a key that'll fit it. Maybe find some old spare ones that we can try out. Uh, worst case scenario, we may just have to end up drilling that lock cylinder out, getting a screwdriver in there where we can actually open it up and see what's inside there. You can tell this old car has just been setting up a while underneath them old pine trees though. It's done built up quite the residue on this driver's side uh, that will have to get rinsed off. I think this car will really clean up cool and look really nice once we get it all pressure washed off. It's hard to tell, but this glass here is pretty much shattered. So once again, maybe one of the parts cars will have what we need on that. Now inside the car, she's pretty dated, but it's definitely clean enough to drive. I uh, love the old dash inside here. Now this is an automatic. Uh, he's put in some aftermarket gauges down here to kind of keep track of your, your temperature, your oil, making sure that your alternator's charging, all that good stuff. Uh, we don't have the key to this ignition, but I've noticed a few toggle switches over here. So maybe they've just got a wire ran to the fuel uh, cutoff solenoid there, and maybe this button just engages your starter and turns it over. Uh, not really sure on that but pretty good shape on the dash and everything. The old carpet needs to be pulled out and some new carpet in it. And the seats are definitely, well, they're funky. Our old headliner began to sag and looks like they've tried to patch it up with some, some flat aluminum. But yeah, that pretty much gives us a quick walk around on the car. Now we still have no idea of what kind of suspension is up underneath this thing. Uh, but at this point, we wanna see if we can get this car to crank up. So whatever we can do to get in the trunk, find the battery, get some juice to it, make sure we have some fuel and just see what she sounds like. Uh, it may be, but then again, it, like I said, these are fitting. I know that's not going to be one that's more of an ignition key, so I didn't think it would fit. Crazy how you can come up with so many extra keys. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which you can, the old Ford, you can tell them right off the bat, and that's a Chrysler. I don't think it'll be one like that, but you never know. look a little new, don't they? Yeah, they look too new, yep. That's one thing about it, we don't mess with a whole lot of 50 stuff. Right. Uh, before we drill it out, do you think we could <laughs> pull the back seat loose and try to get through there to unlatch it? Might, yeah, I mean that. Which I don't know where they've got 
I'm pretty sure you, the fuel cell is going to be in here, but I don't know how they've got it mounted. Right. Be worth a shot, maybe. Yeah, I mean. I don't think neither one of us. I started to say it's going to take somebody pretty skinny, and I know I'm not fitting through it. Let me see what it looks like I'm even getting down. I'd rather do that, but. Yeah. At this point, we have to do whatever we can, I guess. Did you look in this console? No, I sure didn't. Headlight. Yeah, I think we can pull this seat out fairly easy. Let's try that real quick. Okay. Should just lift that right. Yeah. Figured there'd be a couple bolts out right here. I have a little release thing there, yeah. Here, maybe. I see if there's even a hole back there. There we go. Got yours? Yeah. I'm left hand, I mean right handed and trying to hit it left handed ain't working for Let me. Let me go ahead and get, I think mine will come right out here. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. I see the, can fit through that. <laughs> yeah, I see the fuel tank there. I'm gonna go grab a flashlight where we can see. Okay. Okay, if you if you look right there, Christian, that that screw right there that you see the two up there high, mm -hmm. then there's like a cutout spot there, and then about that far below, there's a a, a screw, mm -hmm. and about that same distance below, there's a hole. Okay. What you need to do is get that, that's what's going to turn. You get that screwdriver in there. If you can rotate it counterclockwise, I believe, okay. that should uh, should click it open. Okay. Hopefully. You just go ahead and try it? Yeah. Because I can't get in there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right there. There's a fender skirt. Cool. Oh, we got two batteries. I don't think them batteries are too old. Don't look at do they? No. I'm trying to find a date. I bet you they take a charge. The fuel cell. Sounds empty. It does. Yeah. About three quarters of an inch of fuel down in it. Looks good though, from what I can tell. I'm glad that's back here. Yeah, that was a good find there. A spare, a white wall. Yeah. That was everything we were looking for anyways. Yeah. None of the lines look too dry rotted. I said, I don't think it was setting up too terribly long. We want to try to put a charge on those? Yeah, I think that'd be see. Our, our best bet. I mean, we got nothing to lose on them. Right. Get them pulled off, get them on the charger. We can either drain, maybe go ahead and drain it out since there ain't that much in it anyways. Right. Yeah. Get that out and put some fresh fuel in it. See what it does. So we were really hoping that these old batteries would take a charge, but after letting them set overnight, pulling them out and finding out that they were actually dated back from 2016, we knew that that was never going to happen. So we ended up replacing the batteries with some new ones. We also drained our old diesel out of the tank and topped it off with some fresh fuel. Now at this point, we just need to get this engine compartment cleaned up of all these old pine needles just to see what we're even working with. Ooh. 
Yeah, there's definitely some rigging on this old pan down here. Oh yeah. It's some kind of a skid plate, I guess they've made. Cause you can tell we got a bunch of dirt clods on there. That oil pan has took a hit pretty hard. And that's probably about the time they put this skid plate, which is like a piece of six inch pipe and a piece of quarter inch plate. Huh. So we may want to shorten down the pan eventually. Right, uh, yeah. I think we're fine with the dent because everything's way up here anyways, you know. We should be clearing all the crank and rods. Right. But, you got a screwdriver or something I can try to clean that dirt off with to get to that plug. It's nice and rusty. Gonna need some PV blaster and then looks like a three eighths ratchet. Ready? <laughs> we got a pan or something. To catch this in. Yeah. cheater or something. I think it's tight. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good though. filter and we'll go ahead and change it out too. Yep. Like I said it don't look too bad though. Just dark. Just dark. It might be just as easy to get that thing off through the finger oh, yeah. oil there. Yeah because I was looking at it earlier and up underneath everything here. Yeah I'll go grab it. Hanging in on here. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Light fell. <laughs> Thought you were seeing stars. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to make a mess here regardless. I think so, because it looks like it's going to hit right on that cross member. And... Let's go ahead and fill that new one up with oil first. Okay. Tell me when. Alrighty. A little bit to do that. 
I'll go ahead and put a little bit more in there. It's really sucked yeah, yeah, in there. See, it's going down. Yep. So it ain't starting off dry. Right. Now if I can get it in there without spilling it. snug on it, man. Uh, let's top her off with oil. It's going to take three of those bad boys. Twelve quarts. Fuel looks great in this thing. See? Oh yeah. Super, super clean. It's definitely pretty old. But it ain't like gas, cause any gas that had been in there that long, it'd been terrible. Yeah. Seventy-five dollars worth of oil. <laughs> Strange, this filter ain't got a bit of paint on it. <laughs> right on the fool. Can you say, is there a, a gasket on that? Did that filter come off? No. No? Well, John, a gasket or an O ring? It's like this. Is that a hard rubber? Yeah. Yeah, it's on there then. Maybe sure we get that all. Let's fill this up with some diesel also. Okay. Both of these are pretty easy to get at. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. 
Look at that diesel all on your hands though. Everything <laughs> is slick. slippery. Should be like a prime button down here. I wanted to go ahead and try to, yeah. Let me make sure this is tight. If it leaks a little bit, that'll give you a trail to follow home. <laughs> pressure there. <laughs> I think we're pretty good on it. Other than cooling. I guess right. we might as well fill that up too. Let's go grab some of that real quick. Make sure it don't pour out everywhere. There's some good stuff. Bone dry. Let's see, I thought I heard it running, but maybe not. I think it's just filling everything up. Nothing coming out down here. Okay. Oh, yeah, it is. Never mind. It's coming out right out of the. I can't tell what that's coming out of. So you got the fan there? Yeah. It's coming out pretty good. Let me find something. Unfortunately, we don't have anything clean and ready. <laughs> I don't know. How much did you get in there? Uh, probably just shy of half a gallon. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I got a hole in the bottom of the radiator. I see it right. Like you say, it's right at the fan right uh -huh. there. Looks like there's a weld on that aluminum right across that area. I wonder if that fan rubbed a hole in it or something. It could have. How does it? <laughs> sheet metal screw. Yeah, sheet metal screw there. Sheet metal screw there. Pull it out. I almost got to to be able to see what it is. Yeah. Right. Let's go ahead and pull these hoses off first, I guess. said they've got, I think there's only two sheet metal screws holding this whole radiator on. <laughs> I didn't see anything down below. Nope. Yep. Let's go get themselves tappers out. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have to unwire that fan too, though. Yeah, it comes back. Got a plug anywhere? Not yet. I don't know where it goes from there. Is that loud?
don't see anything. Can you tell what, is that a red and black wire or a blue and black? Um, I've got. Uh, it's red and black to where okay. it's. I'm wondering if it ain't right here where they got this tape on it. They probably just, let me pull it back some. Yeah, it is. Okay. We'll just have to cut them, unfortunately. So it didn't look like there was no plug down there? No, there's nothing. It goes, the black one goes to a screw in the fender and the red one runs all the way back up underneath the dash. So, red to blue and black to black. I got the drain there too, so I don't think it was coming out of that though. Huh. I don't really see anything. Get it outside and put some water in it, I guess, yeah. and just yeah. kind of tell where it's coming from. To me, it looked like it was coming across the fan here and coming out. Oh, yeah, like it's one of these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I'm not sure that you can reuse these or not. Man, figure that out. Looks like there's a slit all the way across that, maybe. Oh. Right there somewhere. Then oh, they're split right there. See them? Right all the of them at the yep. bottoms? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Every one of them. That one, that one, that one, that one, all the way to maybe that one. Mm -hmm. Man. Man, that's too bad. I'd have rather it been out here yeah. where we could actually done something. Yeah. Make sure that is where it's Yeah, yep. I see it coming out. Yep. Oh That's yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine once that thing's under pressure? Yeah. Well we may need to find another radiator, because I'm not sure how not with it being right down in yeah, the thing there. how they'd repair that. I'm sure it can be done, but these aftermarket radios are pretty easy to come across too. So with us finding out that we had this old leaky radiator, uh, rather than trying to find a shop that could repair it for us, we decided to just go ahead and go with a brand new one and for a couple reasons. Now on our old radiator, where it's actually damaged at, it's gonna be a pretty tough repair and gonna be rather costly. Now we were able to pick up this radiator with a new metal shroud, new fan for right around 220 bucks. Now, as you can tell, there's quite a few difference in the radiators. This one being taller, they're pretty much the same width, but we found out that we had a two row in here and we went with a three row with this new radiator. So that's gonna give us a little bit better cooling to cool down this old diesel engine. You'll also notice on our inlet ports here, 
One's in the middle on our old one, and on this one, it's gonna be on our driver's side. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of hose uh, changing on that to make it work, uh, but that shouldn't be any kind of problem. Now with having this new metal shroud, that'll be nice. We won't have to worry about zip tying this fan back to this radiator. Uh, they always seems to cool better when you have the shrouds anyways, so we just decided to go with this. It come off a 1948, 49, 50 F14, I believe, is what this radiator was actually made for. Now, the ultimate main reason we chose to go with this, though, is because we have some transmission cooler fittings. And this radiator has none at all. And as you guys saw when we pulled it out of the car, there's no trans cooler mounted on this car whatsoever. What we found out underneath here after we got looking around is coming off our transmission. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but right here is one of our lines coming up front. And then right here is the other one. And we've just got it looped back around into each other. So that's not good. We're hoping that they didn't drive this car any kind of long distance that allowed that tranny fluid to really get hot and possibly mess up that transmission. Uh, but at this point, we're gonna be able to hook into these lines, actually run to our trans cooler on the radiator. And so we're fixing a couple problems at once. And hopefully when we fire this thing up, she'll actually go in gear and move for us. So we ended up having to go ahead and drill out our factory ignition switch in the car. And uh, now we got a new tumbler installed with new keys. Uh, we've got our new radiator installed up front and went ahead and ran new radiator lines to it. So now we've actually got a trans cooler for our transmission. Uh, the next thing to do is just try to turn this thing over and see what it does. Now I'm not exactly sure what all he's got ran to these toggle switches here, but them diesels are pretty simple to run wiring to. There's just a fuel cutoff solenoid uh, and that's basically it and then your wire's down to the starter. So we'll just put the key in, uh, see what it does, and go from there. And we got gauges. Wow, fancy gauges. Fans working, huh? Yeah, fans working. Huh. Well, I guess there's a switch to turn it off, except this. Push button start. I think we're in park. I'll try it. I guess I'm out of the way. So. Try it again. Try it. I heard it once there. Hang on. Is the uh, throttle working? Watch. Yeah. Stiff in here. She's going She's to gonna crank. I hate this throttle. It's weird. I said she's going to crank. Maybe I should have said he's going to crank. Pressure's coming up. About still climbing. 67 psi oil pressure. I don't know that our batteries are charging now. 
our alternator might not be working. black smoke. A little bit. Maybe we can get some more. You want to see if they'll go in gear? I'm thinking they've got this backwards. That's reverse. some fluid because we filled up that trans cooler now. Oh, yeah, yeah. See if this key kills it. Yep. Cool. So after we were able to get a little bit of transmission fluid down in here and see the car shift through the gears the way it needs to, we found out that we had a pretty bad coolant leak leaking from a metal line up underneath the car as well. So we went ahead and pulled that line off, got that patched up and replaced, and went ahead and just cleaned off all this old mold from the windows so we could actually see to try to drive this thing. Now at this point, we're hoping that she'll at least crank up go in gear and make it to the car wash where we can wash off some of this dirt of over several years. Actually fires right up now. As far as I know, brakes feel pretty good, but they're all manual. There's nothing power about them. And our shifter is definitely backwards. No power steering either. You gotta work for everything on this car. Really hoping this transmission is fine with the way they had those lines just loop back into each other. So far feels pretty good though. about these tires because <laughs> they've been flat for a while but we're not having to make it too far actually steers pretty good though to be just manual steering that big old heavy engine Definitely not a fan of how close these pedals are. <laughs>
So guys, when we first found this old car, we were super excited to know that we were able to bring it back home with us. Finding out that this thing had a 12 valve Cummins packed up underneath the hood seemed like something that we just couldn't live without. Now it had been several years since this old car had actually been running and on the road, so there were several kinks that we had to work through to get it alive and running back under its own power. Now this old car is definitely a cool project, but I do feel like there's several things that we can do to it just to put our swing on it. Now I'd like to come back and change out our wheels and tires with something that fits the car well, clean up this patina a little bit more and get it shining the way it needs to, and try to rebuild and fix any other kind of problems we might run into along the way. So as you guys know, with having a car this cool, it's definitely got to have a right name that fits with it as well. So let us know down in the comments below, if this old rig was yours, what would you call her? As always, we thank you guys so much for the support and watching. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check out our Restored channel as well, and we'll see you on the next one.